Who do they work for, if anyone? We may never know for certain. That branch of the Palestine Liberation Organization, which is loyal to Yasser Arafat, has said it was in no way responsible. There have been a couple of the usual phone calls, but nobody takes them seriously. One was made to a Spanish radio station, the caller claiming to represent a very violent Palestinian renegade named Abu Nidal. The other was made to an Italian news agency. It didn't name a group. In Israel, once again, there is anger and determination. Here's ABC's Bob Zellner. Passengers aboard El Al Flight 364 arrived from Vienna late this afternoon, relieved their ordeal was over. <laughs> the flight from Rome will arrive tomorrow. While some Israeli spokesmen accused the PLO of sponsoring the attacks, senior officials spoke more generally about extremist Palestinian factions. I believe it's another proof to the atrocities that the Palestinian terrorist organizations can carry out. In New York today, the PLO's UN representative denied his organization's involvement. The perpetrators are criminals. The PLO has condemned this act of terrorism. Officials here left no doubt that when the culprit organization is identified, Israel will retaliate. We have never let terrorist acts go unpunished. And we will choose the time and the place where we will react. When three Israelis were murdered in Cyprus last September, Israel retaliated by bombing PLO headquarters in Tunis, 1,500 miles away. And the Israelis have often targeted for reprisal Syrian-backed PLO units in Lebanon. But a move into this area in response to today's incidents could bring Israeli planes up against recently deployed Syrian ground-to-air missiles. Over the years, the Israelis have proven themselves adept at making the terrorists pay a high physical and political price for his violence. And when, as today, that violence amounts to little more than random and savage butchery, the price paid is likely to be very high indeed. Bob Zelnick, ABC News, Tel Aviv. Throughout Europe today, in the wake of these two attacks, there was a full alert at other airports and a general acknowledgement you can slow terrorism down, but you cannot stop it altogether. The reaction in Washington has been much the same. Here's ABC's John McCracken. Terrorists must have no place to hide, said State Department spokesman Charles Redmond. Terrorists who kill and maim innocent civilians are beyond the pale of civilization and must be held responsible for their crimes, which no cause can justify. Redmond said the U.S. had been working closely with other governments to stop terrorists before they kill, and in fact claimed that 90 terrorist attacks had been thwarted this year. However, the terrorists have certain advantages, including that of surprise, and in some cases, the support of other governments. Those other governments include Iran, Libya, and Syria, among others. So attuned is the intelligence community to the growing threat that Interpol, the International Law Enforcement Agency, and the Federal Aviation Administration warned airlines this fall to be especially vigilant during the holidays, that evidence indicated there could be attacks. This FAA telegram warned that some 400 people were training in hijacking operations inside Iran and that Iran had gotten 176 Algerian passports as travel documents. There is no evidence to link Iran's activity then with what happened today. Despite the warning and an FAA inspection of the Rome airport two weeks ago, officials admit they were powerless to stop what happened. Now, all of the security measures that they inspected and found to be in good shape would not have prevented this, this attack. Intelligence analysts say terrorists involved in suicide attacks often do not know who they really work for, making it difficult to assess responsibility even when they're captured. Tactics have also changed. What's happened is that the terrorists have only gotten bloodier. They're uh, no longer trying to appeal on the basis of achieving uh, a sympathetic reaction from the Western public. The goal now is apparently to shock and to frighten, sending a message that no country's citizens are safe a message which was heard loud and clear today in Vienna and Rome. John McQuethy, ABC News, the State Department. And one other piece of information from the State Department today. Their records show 630 separate terrorist attacks this year. The number of incidents, the state says, is growing at a rate of about 15% a year. There will be more on the terrorist attacks later this evening on Nightline with Ted Koppel.